Namaskar. Hello, viewers. Welcome to another episode of Cultural Journey with Manushi, Sanskritic Safar, Manushi ke saath mein. Aaj hum atyante bhagya shali hain ke studio mein humare aaj maujood hain Vishwa Vikhyat Surbahar Vasitar Vadak, Imdad Khani Kharana se sambandh rakhne wale Padma Bhushan Pandit Buddha Ditya Mukherjee. It's an honor for us to have the world-renowned sitarist and Surbahar player, Pandit Buddha Ditya Mukherjee, in our studios. Panditji is known for his unique style of playing sitar, which includes an unmatchable speed and clarity with the Khayal Gayaki Ang. Aye, Pandit Buddha Ditya Mukherjee se baat cheet karte hain aur unke safar par chalte hain. Namaskar, Panditji. What an honor for us to have you in our studios. Thank you so much for coming. It's my honor, pleasure, and I'm so elated to be on this fantastic show. Thank you. Um, our first question would be, our viewers would like to know, how did this journey of yours, how did this musical journey of yours begin? And uh, how did you get introduced to Sattar? Well, I was blessed to be born to Bimulindu Mukherjee and Nilima Mukherjee, my father and mother. Right. And uh, my father was uh, a well-known sitar player mm -hmm. and uh, has been my guru. Mm -hmm. So I was very lucky to have my guru at home in my father and all my training has been from him. Mm -hmm. So um, this is how, uh, when I was very young, uh, I was perhaps five years of age, mm -hmm. that time my father brought me a small sitar. Small See, sitar. I, 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 something that a five-year-old can hold. The okay. full-size sitar is a larger thing, and a five-year-old cannot hold it. Right. So, um, and he said that this is the, the you have to play this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you cannot expect a five-year-old child to start with sa, re, gamma, right. and all technicalities, this and right. that. So it's like it should uh, be like a toy for the child. Right. And my father was very wise in his visions how to teach. So with me, uh, he um, gave me a small composition. Mm -hmm. He told me that, okay, these are some important points, uh, says a sa and a pa and a sa. Mm -hmm. so, and he made me realize that these notes are played by pressing these frets, mm -hmm. which is a very small thing. And then instead of telling me to practice sare gama padani sa and all mm -hmm. that, very the typical exercises, mm -hmm. He gave me a small composition, small composition, mm -hmm. and he said, you play this. It sounded nice. I tried to play it. Mm -hmm. And then because I liked, and he made sure that he, whatever he gave me, it spiraled into a, it, it spiraled into a situation of pleasure. A desire to take, the, take and play on the sitar another day, and another day, and another day. Because that is important. If the child gets bored with the instrument, or the music that is being expected, then he will not want to play. Right. So on this, uh, my father's uh, foresight, I am the result of that. Amazing, what a guru. Right. Yes, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> right. It is because of his foresight and his compassion and the liberties he allowed me mm -hmm. in my uh, getting to like the music mm -hmm. and play the sitar more effectively is something that uh, I have no words to express it with. Of course. Except the music that I am playing, I owe it to him. Nice. Uh, however, you are a metallurgical engineer. And uh, what made you take sitar as your, well, I wouldn't say career as such, but yes, career. Um, uh, what, what made you go towards sitar? And was it really difficult? Today, I am known as a sitar player. Right. I have been a professional sitar player from almost the age of 16. Right. But it, this is a very uh, fragile situation of decision making at a time of life mm -hmm. when the future has a lot yet to show you. Mm -hmm. Because I did my studies in school, then when I went to, after I did school, uh, all the time I was playing sitar. Mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, uh, in 1970, in the radio music competition, I was in class 10, 
You were our, young, our, though. yeah, mm -hmm. and I topped the uh, radio music competition right. while I was in school itself. Right. Uh, all that was a kind of, uh, see, it did not at that time show the path that what profession I would take. And a musician's profession is fragile. One cannot say, look, I am going to become a musician and lo, you become a musician. It does not happen like that. So, a backup was required. Okay. And I came from a family in which education was a commonplace thought. So, I also needed to learn, study something. And uh, we used to live in a place called Bhilai. It is more well known for a steel plant. Right. And uh, so, kind of obvious choice for me was to learn something in which if I became an engineer, I could uh, work, perhaps work in a steel plant if needed. But these were all preparation points, right. not decision making points. Right. And the engineering study was a backup situation. So, I was beginning to like sitar more and more. And uh, happily, I found that in those young, at that young age, whatever little sitar I might have been playing, seemed to get an acceptance from uh, elders and uh, many people who used to hold concerts. And uh, I, I, without really realizing when, one day I realized that I was actually playing on the stage in front of many people at various places. Right. But that still does not say that this is going to last. Who knows? Right. Future is never known. Mm -hmm. So, we did. So, I um, continued with my studies and uh, by the grace of Almighty from right from first year, I used to top the engineering uh, faculties. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It was a common faculty. Our system of education uh, made the first two years in engineering as a common faculty and then from the third year, we used to become, uh, go into the fields that mm -hmm. we were expected. So, my professors were very kind. They allowed me the liberty in engineering. You know that it is you have to have uh, attendance, uh, very right. strict attendance right. schedule. And well, it is known to everybody who does engineering. Right. And uh, I was moving here and there mm -hmm. for concerts. Mm -hmm. And my professors had, um, I would say, a very kind and soft corner for me. Mm -hmm. For I was uh, able to bring forward forward my institute's name also at the various right. venues that I went. Yeah. So, they allowed me the liberty of moving and playing. So, that was a huge gift. Mm -hmm. I would say a gift, mm -hmm. a precious gift of belief that I received from my professors in the uh, engineering course that they said, Ki, okay, we will let you, we will give you the liberty, but you have to, allow, your academic work has to remain where you have already placed it. So, right. if I flopped in that, <laughs> all these liberties would be taken away. Right. So, you can see that uh, right. it was a, quite a challenging situation where I was allowed a liberty of going and performing mm -hmm. wherever and whenever I wanted, but at the same time that depended, that liberty depended on my ability to maintain mm -hmm. myself at the highest academic output point. Right. So, it, it also taught me. Mm -hmm serious self-discipline and it also helped me realize the importance of time management. All that you are saying are so precious, like every word is a gem and it teaches everybody a lot of things that you are saying from your experience what you had. Thank you so much. Um, your sitar is very, very famous for one reason. I know that it is a unique sitar because you created it. Uh, you actually have read in other places that um, this sitar is, uh, after a lot of experiments that you did with other sitars, you actually meet the sitar. Aap is sitar ke baare mein hume zara bataiye ki kya, kya wajah thi ki aapko ye sitar aakhir mein ja ke baap ne banaya aur mila aapko? Dekhi sitar vaadan karne ke liye jo saaj milta hai, the instrument that we touch, mm -hmm has to have an ambient sound mm -hmm. which inspires the artist mm -hmm. to be more creative. Mm -hmm. Now, I, in my imagination, I have 
some music working. This is a creative music, so I have learned something and I am trying to live with it. Mm -hmm. How do I live with it? I try to express it through the instrument that I am holding and touching. Now, in my desire to express myself, I need the support of a particular type of sound. Okay. Just having an instrument that looks like right. this, known as the sitar, mm -hmm. please mark my words, mm -hmm. having an instrument that looks like this, there are thousands and thousands of sitars made and they look the same, mm -hmm. does not exactly sound the same okay. or the same, uh, my statement is incorrect, it does not sound, give the sound of that ambient sound that I individually want for my right. music to survive. Right. Mm -hmm. When I need myself to survive through the music, I have but one support and that is the ambient sound of the sitar which I am not getting. Mm -hmm. So, it stifles the creativity of an artist. Many people uh, who might have experienced this will agree with me when they hear mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I too felt the similar stifling situation handling almost 9 sitars over a period of 22 years of my uh, youth. Mm -hmm. So, so how did this sitar finally? So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can understand that in those 22 years, maybe 23 mm -hmm. years, I was playing the sitar with a sound that did not support my desires. Right. So you can imagine the extreme strained mental condition mm -hmm. that I might have been experiencing, right. which of course I did not allow it to be understood by anybody. <laughs> right. uh, but every instant was an extreme strain. So, one day I decided and, and you can just understand that what mm -hmm. I want as the sound is almost next to impossible to explain that to another person. Suppose I am asking somebody to make a sitar with the sound of my imagination how on earth am I going to explain, explain. my imagination right. to that person? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It is like this, it is like that, it is like this, it carries no meaning. Mm -hmm. So, that as you can easily gauge left me with just one choice, mm -hmm. make your sound. Make it yourself. Mm -hmm. And I knew nothing about the structural right. work of the sitar. Right. I was a sitar player, not a sitar constructor. Right. So, as a result, I had to do, I had to take this, you can say, I had to take this challenge of mm -hmm. ripping apart sitars, right. working or creating a working process. Mm -hmm. Creating a working process requires immense research mm -hmm. and sitar as you see is a sealed instrument Right. and if you have to work on fine structural changes in the inside which is creating different frequency outputs. Mm -hmm. So, you do not know which combination is going to give you that sound. Right. So, you have to rip apart the sitar, work a bit on that, reseal it, play it, wait for it, the whole thing to dry, play it, check the sound, is it towards the direction that you want or not. But thankfully, at least I know that what I want. That is that was like a you know a, a small tiny lamp giving a glow in total darkness, right. showing me that path of where I need to reach with no way to know how to reach. Wow! I am sure you can yeah, understand so like the a situation. Discovery that you made right on your path. Discovery would be if I did not know the that where that light is. Okay. So. I would not exactly say it was a discovery because that light, the image of the sound I wanted was embedded in my mind, but I did not have any process. So, to create the process, I had to obviously rip apart the sound, uh, rip, up, rip the apart sitar, the, the I obviously had to rip apart the sitar mm -hmm. hundreds of times and then ripping apart the sitar repeatedly could easily also end up damaging the sitar and these processes are all one way processes. If you have thinned out, if you have overdone a particular work, you just cannot go back. Mm -hmm. So, you have to discard the thing. 
you restart the whole process, remembering your error. Right, right. right. So, right. like that, mm -hmm. I spent almost 12 years, perhaps 13 years, mm -hmm. uh, some uh, uh, a sitar could, might have been opened, say twice, might have been opened 10 times, I do not remember any longer, I do not wish to remember. But the net result is with that slowly, slowly I found the direction to move and I reached this sitas, the sound which I have now and I would like to explain the change in my survival conditions with the sitar with one statement. Earlier, I had to play the sitar, right. which was I had to play the sitar. Right. After this sound got created in this sitar, the sitar now plays me. How beautiful. So, well, you can understand how comfortable I am with this sound. With sound right. And uh, I have been often asked, who makes your sitar? Who has made your sitar? So, when I say that uh, I have designed, I have not, I would not say I'm, I make the sitar, I would only say that I make the sound. The sound that you want. And to make the sound mm -hmm. is quite a complex process, not quite a complex process, it is an incredibly complex right. process. I am not sure if your metallurgical engineering background helped you a little bit in uh, making the sitar something to do with I the would strength? not say so much because uh, it helped me in a different way. Okay. It helped me to because of the nature of engineering studies mm -hmm. which requires mm -hmm. a very uh, discerning and uh, highly focused mind. So, the creation of state of mind, okay, that's right. my engineering studies helped me mm -hmm. in that way. The state of mind, I could focus to read my necessities accurately and also read the inaccuracies over these 12 years of my work, so that I could relate how far am I from what I want. Okay. If I was out of focus in that, then I would never reach where I have reached. Right. Now that with that immense knowledge that you have, do you also teach, um, do you have a gurukul or do you have an institution where you teach students? Uh, after seeing, my father had almost, almost 400 students mm -hmm. over the years that I saw him teach. Mm -hmm. I, I saw various situations mm -hmm. and realized that uh, in spite of the apar kindness, uh, incredible kindness that my father bestowed upon all the students who just walked in. Mm -hmm at any time of the day or night and mm -hmm. he obliged everybody mm -hmm. that sometimes people did not realize the value of the most expensive gift of teaching that a saint is selflessly giving them. That's right. mm -hmm. I consider my father's thought process saintly. Mm -hmm. He gave more perhaps more time to all his students than I got from him. Mm -hmm. And to him all his students were the same. The, but then every individual is different. So, the outputs obviously were different. I am also a student, my output is there for you to see. Right. So, I realized that this is not exactly how people would take the serious nature of the music. Mm -hmm. So, I have been very selective, okay. extremely selective mm -hmm. because someone who says that he has learned from me, anybody knowing that whatever sitar I play would expect that person to be able to deliver a level of music which is giving some credence to the fact that he says he has learned from me. Exactly. Sure. Now, suppose that does not happen and the person's output is so poor, having come in contact with me and he takes my name and his output remains so poor, I would be questioned, not he. Am I a bad teacher? I perhaps I do not know how to teach. No one will blame the student. The teacher will be questioned, is this how you teach? 
So, that is a important that for me is an important consideration. So, I have now could say four students, okay. but I am happy to be able to say that they whatever sitar mm -hmm. they play, I would be able to sit for a while and listen to them. That's very nice, yeah. That's, that's great, yeah. Um, so, you know with technology, uh online teaching ke baare mein bahut baat karte hain maine bhi suna hai ha aur ye online teaching aap what are your views aapko kya lagta hai ki ye hona chahiye nahi hona chahiye online is a convenience Achha. somebody who is staying in perhaps mm -hmm. a thousands of kilometers mm -hmm. away from where their teacher stays uh, internet has made it possible for right. a communication to occur mm -hmm. but of course the qualities of that communication leave much to be desired uh, across continents, one does not know how things are going to, how the communication will be. However, what I understand from this uh, incredible progress in technology, mm -hmm. it still does not, has not, I am speaking specifically for my little bit of experience. It could be a totally different thing with somebody else's experience. But in my experience, while teaching the sitar, it is not just you press the string, put the frets and uh, you stroke with the right hand and uh, you press this and you give a sound over here and that is sitar playing. Well, that is basic sitar playing, yes of course, but it does not make much music. Now, to communicate intricacies of expression, if a person to person communication, a one to one communication does not occur, then it leaves certain doubts in the person who is receiving the communication and could be interpreted incorrectly because the aesthetics do not get fully conveyed through this wonderfully digitized medium. That is right, yes, okay. Uh, about uh, the your style, you have a unique style of playing. Uh, it includes that um, uh, the, the clarity, the speed that we talk about all the time, in, uh, and as well as it has that khayal gayaki ang included. So, how do you maintain that balance and uh, how do you do it? If you can please share that with our viewers, the technical part of it, that would be really nice. It is creative music. Right. Upaj is how we try to move in the music. We have the rag, the rag mm -hmm. has. Uh, fixed boundary, mm -hmm. but in the boundary there are huge dimensions that you can move, uh, that you can move towards. Mm -hmm. So, basically the mind is singing, everybody's mind, whether whatever instrument they play, a bowing instrument, the voice is also an instrument. Of course. Mm -hmm. as stroke stringed instrument like the sitar or the sarod, uh -huh. uh, surbhar, veena, whatever you play, uh -huh. the mind is singing. The hands are a reflection of what the mind is singing. So, the gaiki ang means the mind is actually singing out a khyal or whatever. Right. Our mind is desiring the music to be expressed in that way. But I am not singing. So, I am playing the sitar. So, my movement in music, my imagination will get manifested through the instrument that I am playing. This is the physical manifestation of the imagination that is working. The imagination is the gaiki yang. I will explain why this manifestation is complicated. Because when we are specially playing the alap, let, let me, because alap is the most complex part and it is the most beautiful part of uh, the Gai Kiang. So, when we are playing the alap, we are e expected to deliver the music in flowing and very curvaceous uh, phrases. Mm -hmm. Now, <coughs> those beautiful phrases need a certain time length for its complete, for its completion. Mm -hmm. The sitar sound may not necessarily support that length of duration of that uh, musical phrase. Okay. So, obviously, you are expected that 
uh, well, how do you keep the phrase going? You st strike again. Mm -hmm. But if the strike of that point is not at the most desirable part, mm -hmm. the source of your sound, the, your stroke, mm -hmm. the source, the, your sound creation will be the death of the phrase. So, your music is finished only because you needed to refurbish the sound with a stroke right. and it did not happen at the right point. Right. So, this, this understanding is what makes alap so difficult on the sitar mm -hmm. and so easily one tends to find mm -hmm. that the alap has become uh, not so attractive, mm -hmm. though that is the most attractive part of the music. So, in Gaiki Ang, to be able to present the flow of music the way a vocalist would sing, mm -hmm. I am limiting myself to the khyalang. Mm -hmm. So, following that path is what makes us say, at least it makes me say that my music follows the gaiki ang. Right. It follows the gaiki ang. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, Panditji, another question that I want to ask you is, you know how nowadays it's so, uh, the, with the reality shows and all that, people want to really get fame mm -hmm. very quickly. So, what do you think is our, the prospect of Indian classical music as such? Um, uh, what are your views? This is a very interesting question. First of all, we are looking for fame. So, fame is the purpose, not the music necessarily. Many a times, yeah. We have been taught to understand the music is the purpose, the fame right. follows. Right. And your music has to be so consistently good mm -hmm. that it will cause the people to like your music mm -hmm. and that kind of fame mm -hmm. is perhaps a little bit more desired for, something that lasts. In our classical music, uh, we move within the music in an extempore way. So, the person playing the music is the instantaneous creation, right? Creator. Yeah. Right. So, the person who is creating the music is instantly also manifest, making the manifestation of that creation mm -hmm. available through the instrument that he or she is playing. Mm -hmm. So, this upaj, this creative, uh, for a person to be creative, mm -hmm. it is it's actually not that easy a process. Mm -hmm. You learn from your guru who is a much more experienced person in this process mm -hmm. and he gives you a pathway. Mm -hmm. After that is input, then there is assimilation of the input. Mm -hmm. Assimilation takes a long time because it is somebody's way of thinking which you are allowing to flow into your way of thinking and then you accept it, try to live with it and try to experience the beauty of the other person's thinking, so much so that you start thinking the music's pathway in the same way. This is easier said than done. This is why in Indian classical music, mm -hmm. your association with the guru is, if the, if the teacher gives this much material to you, mm -hmm. you are expected to create, recreate mm -hmm. and make it grow, mm -hmm. so that this with your thought process becomes so much. Be that is the assimilative part and when and this could take a person an unknown length of time. That's right. It could be for a person who is very passionate, a shorter length of time, a person who needs to become passionate, a longer length of time. However, there are no shortcuts, <laughs> of course. I have yet to find out a shortcut <laughs> because for, in my limited <laughs> intellect, I have had to spend almost uh, 50, uh, I, I would, I would say I have, I have spent 59 years with the sitar. 59 years. I started when I was mm -hmm. 5 and mm -hmm. 64, so mm -hmm. 59 years with the sitar 
and at 64 I can happily say that I am still learning. Beautiful. So, what am I learning at this moment? Whatever music I play, any time I play, there is a self-assessment going on. That is my father is no longer with us, that is my misfortune, but his memories and ways of teaching are there in my mind and I apply my own music. Imagine that my teacher is improving, is helping me improve that. Certainly I am still improving. I shall be improving as long as I will be playing the sitar. But uh, if we are expecting a shortcut, then I am sorry I do not have anything to tell my viewers. Uh, Penditsi, we would really like to know about your family, uh, who is in your family and a little bit about that. Well, uh, my father, my guru, late Pandit Bimalendu Mukherjee is a source my, of my inspiration, my teacher, his compassionate teaching has helped me, not helped me, he has uh, made me live with the sitar as I have learned to live with the sitar. My mother, Srimati Nilima Mukherjee, mm -hmm. she was very, see a child is always running out to play and I, one day I was also a very young person <laughs> starting the sitar at right. 5, 6, 7, whatever. Right. Uh, so, who is going to make the boy practice? My father was a senior, very senior officer in the village steel plant. Mm -hmm. He had 19,000 people working under him. Mm -hmm. He had huge responsibilities. So, in the morning, half an hour, little time I used to get. Mm -hmm. And then in the evening, I was supposed to, when he came home, I was supposed to play for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, little bit, whatever music. Mm -hmm. And whatever he has taught me in the morning, a response to that, I had to give in the evening. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. at least I should have that much of capability to make him remain sitting there wanting to listen to me. So, that was my daily test right. that my father and mother, then I am blessed to be married to Navanita, now 38 years. Navanita is an incredible phenomenon in my life. Wow incredible because she helped me realize more about myself than I knew. And I have no ways to, no ways to adequately put her contribution, her incredible and positive contribution in my life for me to have led this lonely journey with the sitar so happily. The journey with the sitar is extremely lonely. Mm -hmm. There is no one to explain that a little bit. Our viewers would like to know. There is no one to look towards except your own music. There are other great ones who have played good, fantastic sitar. Mm -hmm. They are there at a pedestal, mm -hmm. on the pedestal level. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Mm -hmm. And when you see the difference occurring from where sitar has already been played and you want to reach there and you find yourself at a very, very low level and you, that is kind of the gradient that tries to pull you up and it is a journey where your self-assessment, this is why it is lonely, you are the only person who can make that assessment most accurately. You have put this so beautifully in the analysis, I am amazed here. And if a thousand opinions come to you. Mm -hmm. You have to reassess those opinions through your own opinion of your own music. Mm -hmm. It is complex. So, it is better that you visualize the pedestal, give yourself their images, allow the mind to absorb the possibilities. Mm -hmm. Possibilities. They exist does not mean that in two days you will start yeah, playing like that. Right. That is out of question. But they are there to show the shining possibilities which has already occurred. It allows you to 
it allows you to measure your own level with what is your expectation from yourself. Mm -hmm. And then the journey is a self-assessment journey. A journey of self-assessment is extremely lonely. Oh. Mm -hmm. So your wife and then? I have my son Bijoy Aditya. Mm -hmm. He has played, he has learned also from the age of five, mm -hmm. plays great sitar. Mm -hmm. But he's a biotechnologist okay. by profession. Mm -hmm. And uh, now he has his own company, the Kamuda. Okay. And is doing very well. Mm -hmm. My daughter-in-law, Amrita mm -hmm. is uh, also a biotechnologist mm -hmm. and together my son and daughter-in-law, they work their company okay. and just 10 days back, they were blessed with a son. Oh, how nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Vikramaditya. Beautiful name. Wow. Mm -hmm. And he's t he had too small to make some decisions <laughs> on his life. <laughs> <laughs> Panditji, what will be your message to our younger generation? This is something very important that we really want to hear from you. Well, I too was young one day, as you might perhaps be young today. So, one has to be patient and work with extreme focus and realize if music is your passion at all, then to, then to pursue it with a zeal and zest that will override any other distraction. This is all that I can say. Wow. Thank you so much, Pandit Ji, for being here. Aap agar humare darshako ko aur hume aashirwad sarup kuch sunaye, to humare liye to bahut badi baat hogi. So if you could please play something on this. Jarur sunayenge. Thank you so much. Namaskar. Namaskar, Shomen Ji. Uh, welcome to our studios. Uh, what an honor to be able to accompany Pandit Buddhaditya Mukherjee, and you have been doing it for a long time now. So, how is your experience with Pandit Buddhaditya Mukherjee's when he is playing and you are playing on stage or otherwise uh, when you rehearse with him or practice with him? Uh, it's such a great honor for me and such a great privilege for me with Panditji. And last uh, 12 years, I am playing with Panditji in India as well as in abroad continuously. And I learned so much things uh, from Panditji. So, Ashomen, uh, what gharana do you follow when you are playing tabla and um, uh, who are your gurus? I am following uh, Farukhabad gharana mm -hmm. and Pandit Panko Chattaji and Pandit Arup Chattaji mm -hmm. uh, is my guruji. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming to our show and um, uh, accompanying Panditji.
आपका बहुत 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 धन्यवाद इस आशीर्वाद के लिए हमें हम बहुत ही भाग्यशाली हैं कि आप हमारे स्टूडियो में आए आपका बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच और इसी के साथ आज हम समाप्त करते हैं आज की यह कड़ी सांस्कृतिक सफर मानुषी के साथ अगली बार हम फिर मिलेंगे एक नई हस्ती के साथ We are going to see you again with another personality in the next episode of Cultural Journey with Manishri. Until then, Namaskar.